people getting into microcontroller development often ask me what platform I use or what they should use. Uh, often a lot of people use Arduino. I use ESP32. When they start looking at them, they see that there is just a ton of different options with features for all different kinds of applications, become quickly overwhelmed with uh, what to choose, what do you get into, and they asked me what I should choose. So I went and thought about this. What do you choose for a beginner getting into ESP32? And what I decided on is the uh, TT Go, this particular model right here that we see. This is the uh, T-Display ESP32, and this particular one happens to have an LCD screen, and it is a development board. It does have less pinouts available, less I.O., because a lot of it is being used for the screen as well as two buttons. Just as an example of what could be done with this, here's a internet-based igniter for uh, Rocket working on with my nephew. Uh, this one acts as a web server because it supports wireless, also supports Bluetooth. We can see that the screen is employed. In this one, the buttons aren't being used. But there is a relay back here off to the side that can't be seen right now. We can see an interaction between the iPad in this case, as I hit the button and it sees the device is connected, the screen immediately reacts. We get some tactile feedback there, right? There's a screen doing something. And I've done some graphic work here with sprites to display the functionality of the screen. We see that the bear is bouncing like a old screensaver on a, on a DVD player. And again, there's IO available that could be used. In this case, uh, hitting the fire button on the screen that allows... Uh, the relay to function. I've disabled the actual uh, high voltage spark, but we could see if I hit the button, there's a relay turning on, the bear spins around, do it again, see the relay turns on, the bear spins around, and then we have an app. It does what it's supposed to do, all finished. So yeah, it's a good platform. You get uh, visual representation of stuff. You have an input and output all on one board. You have wireless, you have Bluetooth, very nice setup. So we'll get into this device and We'll do a real quick unboxing, as it were, see what it comes with. Ordered from Banggood, it arrives in a bag just like this. Open up the bag, we see the contents inside. Here's the actual board itself. Here are the two buttons. The buttons are connected to I.O. already. That's the reset button right there, off to the side. It takes a USB-C connector for power. We see an external power connector on the bottom. I'm going to touch on that in just a bit. We could also see the headers do not have pins in them because, again, this board is uh, more designed for an end product and not so much for prototyping. So it wouldn't assume that you'd want pin, but it does provide them. And one side has a complete row of pins, right? And you could cut these as needed, of course, if you wanted to. You will be required, of course, to solder them in if you want to put it in a breadboard or whatnot. And it also has uh, divided in half two possibilities right so you could fit half or half of the other or any combination thereof should you choose to do so and this is the uh header for the battery uh if you're not familiar with these boards i wouldn't recommend doing it again you need the serial connection anyway to your computer to do any programming you're also getting power from the computer for newbies use this connection and that's the board right there Really quickly, I just wanted to show what the rocket launcher project looks like on my actual prototype board. This is the prototype board that I generally use for doing ESP32 projects. So we can see there's a lot more wire connections associated with the hookup of a display. And the relay is just about the same, but there are no buttons hooked up in this. Those buttons are part of the actual board itself. This all starts with the downloading of the Arduino IDE from arduino.cc. I'm going to be using the Arduino IDE for this demonstration. So Arduino IDE is currently uh, 1.8.12, and it's available for Windows and Mac and Linux. I make some assumptions here that if you're doing uh, development for the ESP32 or getting into this, you know how to install software. So uh, choose which one you're going to use and install the software, and then we'll come back once this is installed once the arduino ide has been installed like it's shown here we're going to have to add esp32 support to it it's not there natively so we're going to have to go to in this case arduino and preferences maybe file preferences depending on your operating system but it is preferences right we look down here and we see add boards manager urls and i'm going to put uh, this on the uh, screen as well as down below in the comments so we could see 
And once I add that in, we're going to click OK. Once that's completed, we're going to go to Tools and then down to Board and then up to Board Manager. Once this completes loading the Downloading Platforms Index below, we'll look up top and we're going to type ESP32 into the search bar. And we're going to see that one result comes up here, ESP32. We can see mine is already installed. I'm going to hit that Install button and wait for that to finish installing. And once finished, we're going to click Close. At that point, once it loads all of that information, you will then have access to more boards, uh, ESP32 type boards. And we could see if we go to Tools and Boards, we could go to the right. There's a multitude of boards. We'll see ESP32, a wide assortment. But most importantly, for our purposes, we're looking for this TTGO LoRa 32 OLED V1. And that's the board we're going to select. So now we see the board selected this upload speed, this flash frequency, and then we'll get to this next. This is the port. Before we continue, a quick note about USB cables. We have to ensure that the cable you could use is not just a charging cable, but also a data cable. If you're not sure, you could try plugging your phone into your computer with the cable. If it just works for charging, but you don't see any reaction from your computer, like it's trying to uh, sync up or whatnot with that cable, then it's probably just a data cable, and it's not going to work for using it with this device to move data into the ESP32. Mac and Windows are going to require the CP210X driver listed at this URL here. Also in the comments below, choose the one you need and download it. Linux doesn't need any of this nonsense, so if you have Linux, don't worry about it. Once you've installed the driver on the Mac and rebooted if necessary, you could open up a terminal window, plug in the device, type sudo-s, and then dmesg, check the output to see if the driver latched onto the device. In the dev directory on the Mac, you'll see tty.slab underscore USB to UART. This will confirm that you're ready to use the device. We select that device for the port on the Mac, and in doing so, we should be ready to go. There we see the uh, CU Slab USB to UART. On Linux, plugging it in and typing DMESG will even tell you the name of the device that it is bound to, in this case, TTY USB 0. And we can see, looking at the port config on the Linux box, one of the available options on here is, in fact, DEV TTY USB 0, as we know is bound to the interface that is our ESP32. While you were doing all this, as you had plugged in your new ESP32, you'll notice that a demo first appears on the screen as it cycles through a bunch of colors sped up here indicating that this device is factory new. So to make sure everything's working good, we're going to go down to examples. And from examples, we're going to go all the way down to ESP32 and to chip ID, get chip ID. And this is a very simple program. As you see, we're going to push this arrow to the right. That's going to push the code to the ESP32. And we can see it's connecting. I've sped this up a bit to make it quicker. We can see it writing to the device and then finally resetting. But we can see that the code actually writes to the serial interface, which is the same as the USB connection. So we're going to go straight to serial monitor, and we can see that the program does exactly what it's supposed to, which is display what the chip ID is over and over again every three seconds. And it shows that everything's working just fine. We have good connectivity. But if you look at the SP32, you'll notice there's nothing left on the screen anymore. That demo program has been pushed out. Next, we're going to add libraries to write code for the display. We're going to go to Tools and down to Manage Libraries. Wait for this to load on the bottom. It takes a little bit of time. I've sped up to eight times. We're going to type TFT underscore ESPI. And we'll see this bottom one here in the example. Mine's already installed, but it's a little bit out of date. So instead of hitting Install, I'm going to hit Update. But there's an Install button for folks who don't have it installed. And we can see that it is, in fact, installing. We'll wait for that to finish. Once it's installed, simply hit the close button and the installation is completed. Once the installation is completed, you're going to have to go to the Arduino directory. In my case, it's a documents onward to the library directory and then to the TFT underscore ESPI directory at the bottom here is mine. And then there's a file called user setup select dot H. We're going to load that file now. 
Under Linux, this is found under Home, Arduino, Libraries, TFTP underscore ESPI. Within that file, we see this first include user setup.h. We're going to remark that file out immediately. And then we're going to go down to setup number 25. We can see right here, and we're going to unremark setup 25 and then save this file and close it. And that's the only modifications we're going to make. Now we're going to test it out. So we're going to go over to File and down to Examples. Then we're going to scroll all the way down to TFT underscore ESPI. Then we're going to scroll up to Generic. And then all the way up to the top is the Alpha Blend Test. We're going to select that one. Then we're going to hit the right arrow to push the code to the device. Once this code push is completed, we'll have a look at the ESP32, make sure everything is working properly. And as the device is cycled, we can see that the demo is working just fine. We're going to call this Porsche complete and move on to the next step. Now we're going to install an add-on. It's the Sketch Data Uploader. We're going to go to this URL to get this program. We're going to see that it's a zip file. Download the zip file. When it's downloaded, and it's not very big, we're going to unzip it. Once you unzip it, we're going to end up with a, a directory and a structure that's already set up for what we want to do. As I open up my uh, folder here for the Arduino directory, I'm going to create a new directory in the Arduino directory, and I'm going to call this Tools, just like that. And I'm going to take this ESP32FS folder and drop it right in. So what we got is tools, ESP32FS, and within that is tool, and then the jar file. Once that's done, everything looks good. We're just going to close that. If there's a version of Arduino open, we're going to have to close Arduino because we're going to need to restart it. So we're going to quit. And we're going to restart the Arduino application. Once it's restarted, we take a look under Tools, and we see the ESP32 Sketch Data Upload. This portion of the project is complete. Finally, we're going to go to Tools. We're going to go down to Manage Libraries. Once this loads, we're going to type into the search JPEG Decoder. As shown, we have that to find it. And I've obviously installed it already. You're going to press install, hit the close button once it finishes. Once that's finished, we're going to go to examples, scroll all the way down till we see JPEG decoder. Mine went off screen here in the example a little bit, but we're going to go to spiffs underscore JPEG as the example. And this project here loads. As I scroll down to the bottom of the project, turn your attention to particular file. The file is tiger.jpg. It is used in this example. And I want to show in the directory structure that we see in the Arduino directory. So I go to libraries, jpeg decoder. This uh, library we had just installed in the examples directory. We see this under the libraries is this example program. And this in fact has a data directory. And of the two jpeg files that are in here, one of them is that tiger.jpg. This will become relevant as we see that this data directory was discussed just before in that program, that add-on feature, the sketch data upload. And we're going to be using this because this program is selected and I chose the sketch data upload. It's actually taking stuff in that data directory and pushing it to that SPIFFS onto the ESP32. And when that's completed, we will then push the program itself onto the ESP32. And as we've run the program, there is a serial output as part of this program that, this has more to do with uh, showing um, information about the JPEG as it's drawn onto the screen, how long it took and whatnot, because it is in fact an example program. We can see that tiger.jpg is drawn, there's a two second delay, and it runs in a loop, also showing the output as part of this program's function. And that's exactly what it's doing as far as the serial interface is concerned, as we see here off to the right. But as we look at the actual device, we can see that the picture is drawing over and over again every two seconds. Obviously, this picture resolution is not one that um, 
is the same size as this device. It's just being used as an example. But you can see this picture of a lion is in fact drawing over and over again every two seconds, showing that this example is working, the JPEG decoder library is working, and this step is completed. I think that about ends this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful in deciding which ESP32 to build on. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. I think I'm going to use this platform if there's a new module I want to share because it already has a, a, a screen built in and buttons. So that'll be pretty cool. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?